Hi, my name is Noel Davis with World Composting, and today we're going to do an update on our trash can bin that has been going now for quite a while, and it's been 19 days since our last update, and as I said before, I'm going to start treating this just as I treat my urban worm bag and my verma bag. So we're going to kind of have these on the same cycle. So we're going to hit this one, then we're going to do the urban way urban worm bag tomorrow and then the verma bag the day after and we're going to continue to try to do the cycle of doing these same similar updates and similar amounts of food and see if this system can build up to what I can do in my bag systems. I think it can. I think it's a great way to do things if you want to just get started. It's a little bit less expensive. Maybe you have an old trash can laying around. This is a great way to get started before maybe you want to be a little bit more, uh, have things a little bit easier for you I want to say. It's not that the, it's a bad system. It's just that it's hard to harvest castings from it and it's not quite as uh, sealed as these other systems are. So with that, I also want to say that somebody had suggested getting some wheels for the system. And I've looked at this a couple times. The wheels for the Brute trash cans are like 40 bucks, And I was like, that's kind of expensive just so I can wheel it out. Um, I found some at Harbor Freight that were pretty cheap. And I can now wheel it in and out. And I, I have to squeeze it and kind of finagle it. But I can get it out so we can get much better camera angle and a little bit closer down on it. So with that, let's go to our trash can system and take a look and see how it's doing. All right, the first thing I want to show you here, though, is the fact that, as I said, I've got those wheels on. This is a cover that I made. Actually, there's a big spider crawling on it. But uh, this is the cover that I made for my system to go over the top. I never really use it because it dries out too quickly in, uh, in my basement here. So the first thing I have to do, though, is I do have to take off this top so I can get this out. And then, as you can see, on the bottom there, I think... I've got some wheels, and I have to turn it so it'll slide out this way, and then I gotta kind of squeeze it through, just like that. So that's the way this is gonna be getting out of here, but at least it gives me some more space and some better camera angles. But this is still just a little bit narrow back here, but it's still, it works because this is squeezed inside. So, and this is just, if you can see them here, I don't know if you can or not, oh, and you can't from that side. But it's just a, a standard little set of wheels that, that's on the bottom that you find for moving furniture or something. So that's what we have. So let's with that, let's reset the camera. Let's take a look at this system and see how it's doing. All right, here we are with our system. It's 712 was our last update. Today's the 31st. So as I said, 19 days right there. We'll get that updated in just a minute. Um, as I take this off, I see a few fruit flies in here, which is, um, or fungus gnats, I'm not sure which, but I see a couple of them like right over here and coming out over here. So not a good sign, but hey, you know what? I've, I've been trying to deal with these things before and we'll deal with them again. But right now, I also see some mites crawling on the side. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. There we go, I got one of those fruit flies right up here. Um, so, but let me zoom in just a little bit more here. And actually, let me bring this in, yeah, just out just a little bit, there we go. So right now, we're gonna go ahead and dig in this and just take a look and see how things are doing in here. And get an idea for how things look. First off, we've got a pumpkin seed that definitely sprouted right here, but that's okay. But we're going to go ahead and let's dig from this top side here and just see how much food is left in here. First off, already seeing a lot of these baby worms. Um, let's just see if I can shine a little bit better light on that. But lots of baby worms here. This is a good sign. You know, they're, they're expanding their populations. Whoops. Got some apple seeds over there. Looks like a little bit remnants of an apple. More worms over here. Can't tell the lighting is over there, but uh, hopefully it's, it'll be okay. If not, I'll have to adjust next time maybe. Another apple right here. This is probably what those fruit flies are going after. So when that apple's not quite done yet, that's gonna have to be buried. Actually, let's bury that in there right now. We'll just go ahead and bury that down in there a little bit. Got some coffee grounds on top. More worms in there, so we're, we're starting to get build up this massive population of worms in this surface litter here, as they work through this food and come up to the top to feed some more. So every time we scrape, we just move that a little bit into the light a little bit there, and then better into camera view. So you can see right now, stuff on top. Then we've got our castings, and it looks like some worms in there, some little worms and big worms, and we've got some more paper in here. So there's a lot of paper still in the system, but we're adding a lot at each time. And they're not quite going through the paper like I had hoped, but they are moving through this material, although not quite as fast as the other bins. Now the surface area of this one, let's be honest with you, the surface area of this is going to be a lot less than an urban worm bag or a verma bag. Maybe the verma bag mini might be comparable. It's probably actually a little smaller than this. But they're doing a pretty good job of working through this material 
Now remember, we also just started adding a lot of material to this. It wasn't like we prepared them in any way or anything like that. But you can see they're really starting to move through this material really well. And lots and lots of worms in here. Every time, I mean, every handful had worms in it and a good amount. So this is what I like to see. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and dig this up a little bit more. I think we can add some more food, but we're not going to add nearly as much because there are there is a fruit fly issue in here. I don't have a trap in here either. Um, I probably should add one. I'll have to make another one next time maybe. I don't have one ready. And uh, I don't know if I have all the stuff for it either. I think I might be out of... Uh, out of my some of my stuff that I need for that. So I'm trying to think the apple cider vinegar. I don't know if I have any more of that left. So with that though, we are adding stuff that's BTI mix that should be kind of killing off these a little bit. So and I do have traps around here outside. I do have uh, traps hanging in the ceiling, and uh, I've got my bug zapper as well. So with that, we're going to go ahead and continue to add food on top of this. So what we're going to do here is I think instead of two though, we're only going to add one. So we've got a big container of food here we're going to add. I think this has been sitting in my freezer for a while. So let's see, we've got banana peels, we've got coffee grounds, apple core, our standard stuff there, more banana peels. Let's see if we can break this off, more banana peels. A lot of banana peels every time in my stuff. Uh, we've got some broccoli. Let me push this down just a little bit, put, it, put a little bit more center there. We've got uh, another apple core on that side. Got some tea grounds here. Some carrot. Looks like we got some lettuce on here. Yeah, let's see if we can get this apart. I might not be able to break this chunk apart. This part feels really frozen. There we go. Got it. So we got some celery, and this is a big pile of carrot right here. Seeing like a white dust come off. I'm guessing that's just actually cold air, I think, from this because it's so frozen. Um, more banana peels and coffee grounds. So that's all. I think we're gonna, as I said, I think we're gonna go a little bit small this time for the feeding. We're not gonna do their massive two two piece feeding. I think this this system just can't quite handle it. I think compared to the verma bag and the urban worm bag. So we're gonna go with a smaller feeding. There was still food in there left this last time, and this almost takes up this entire surface area. So you can see how much different this is compared to the other system. So with that, let's add our crushed crab and eggshell. And for that, by the way, I've been telling you guys this, but I'm going to just re reiterate masks. When you're doing this stuff, you wear a mask. Hold on, i got to take off my glove to get the mask on here. But make sure you wear a mask when you're doing this stuff. You really should not be just throwing in all this dust and everything into the air and breathing that into your lungs. You're going you're gonna to damage your lungs, and you only get one set of lungs. So, all right, crushed crab and eggshell. Generous application of that. By the way, I do get this stuff on my hands too. I really should probably be wearing gloves on that too. And now we're gonna put in our mixture of water and bedding material. So we're gonna go ahead, which water's in there? It's hard to say, but I'm gonna start emptying this out right here. And this is pre-soaked with our BTI mix and water. Really feels like these worms are not working through the bedding quite as fast as the other worms are. But hopefully they'll speed up a little bit more maybe. That's maybe we cut back on the food. They'll be needing to get some more bedding material. And consume that. Now remember, bedding material is food, but it's just not as readily available with microbes and everything as the food would be the actual human people food that we've put in here. All right. That's a good, good amount of paper in there. Now I have been adding some pine shavings to my verma bag, trying to kind of tap down on fruit flies and fungus gnats. If it works in there, we'll start adding that in here because that is a great way. It's cheap. It's easy to add a huge layer on here. That's nice and dry. And hopefully that would tap down on some of this stuff that's uh, that's forming in here. But so far, this looks like it's working really well. The worms are really starting to pick up this material and go through it. And uh, I'm happy about it. So with that, we're going to go ahead and close this back up. I'm going to roll it back into this corner right behind you here. And we'll come back in a, in a little bit. So let me go ahead and put the top on. 
although I might have to take it off to move it. Let's put this top back on, just like that. And let me go ahead and grab my markers here. So today is 731. And be, just like last time, we did a feeding. So we're gonna put a little dash on here. So I'm just marking this off right here, just like that. And this is, for those of you that are doing this, I do recommend actually keeping track of when you feed and you know, at least at least when you do your updates and everything. Because you, once you start having multiple bins like I do, it gets really confusing. In fact, a lot of times, if it wasn't for the fact that I make videos, I would have no idea when I'm doing any of this stuff. So with that, I'm gonna roll it back in the corner and we'll just let it sit there for a while and get let these worms get to work. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below.